here's the same concept with the Indians, right? They had a certain artistic style they liked. They had a certain look for their gods they liked. And lo and behold, he adapts himself to that too. He loves that serpent image though, doesn't he? In the Hindu religion, Brahman is regarded as the supreme being of whom Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva are manifestations. In this trimurti, meaning three forms, Brahma is creator, Vishnu, the preserver, and Shiva, the destroyer. I think it's interesting that Abaddon is the Hebrew word for destruction, and Shiva is the destroyer, and he has other signifiers that denote him as being the same character as Apollo and Apollyon mm-hmm. of Revelation 9-11. Yeah, not for nothing, Brahman, with the N on the end, uh, is also a way that they say pure and sound doctrine. So oh, really? the ultimate teaching of wisdom in life. And that comes from Brahma gotcha. and, is, and is upheld uh, by the Trinity of Vishnu and Shiva as well. So that's it's interesting. Like they, to, they want you to have true and perfect Brahma, Brahman, which is like sound doctrine, pure down their, their doctrine, right? Their way of thinking. I noticed when reading different accounts of the beliefs of the Hindu religion, there's, there was varying stories and they even talked mm-hmm. about it as one school of thought and this train of That's thought in this school, they don't really have the same consistent message about how all this played out. I saw some of them talk about Brahman is like the essence of the all in all. That's and right. That these manifestations of Brahman are incarnations thereof. Yes, the Brahman goes back to the Om, mm-hmm. which goes back to the essence, which goes back to the purity of perfect thought and, and philosophy and wisdom. Yeah. And so that's where they would say when you tap into the Om and you meditate, you're tapping into the vibration of creation, which is Brahman, where it wherein the Trinity of their Godhead also resides, essentially. Yeah. And so yeah. That's where it's, that came uh, from. The essence yep. and the goodness, the three forms in one. And man, mm-hmm. it all sounds very familiar to it. Sounds like Catholic Trinity, doesn't it? It does. It does. What else do we got here on the India Hindu gods? And guys, just to remind you, we don't believe in any of these guys. We don't, right. we don't follow them. We don't uh, attribute our understanding of our so called religion to any of this. This is just what the God of this world is portrayed. So to go on, the Bhagavata Purana asserts that Brahma who was called the creator of the universe, heaven and earth, was drowsy, he errs in error, and is temporarily incompetent as he put together the universe. That would be terrible. (laughs) But but the stories about Brahma in various Puranas are diverse and inconsistent, as I was just talking about. Encyclopedia Britannica says that very few temples are dedicated to Brahma, who is expressly said to have lost his worshippers as a result of telling a lie. Who did Yeshua say was the father of lies? So it's almost like the, yeah, Mm -hmm. Satan himself can't help but lie. Can't help it. Yeah, and it is possible for mankind to notice lies being told to them by even angelic beings, higher higher entities, you know. Yeah, Um, you got to just have a standard for what the truth is and understand that. (laughs) (laughs) So you can recognize the counterfeit. Oh, they also teach that human minds cannot fully understand Brahman even though they they insist that you worship him <laughs> you can't but you can't understand them so don't try to and then there are thousands of hindu gods but all are believed to be manifestations or incarnations of brahma as i mentioned but yet for us there is just but one god the father from whom are all things and we exist for him and one lord jesus christ by whom are all things and we exist through him that's right so, yeah, we don't have thousands of gods as ones we worship. We have the Most High Father and yep. His Son, Yeshua, our High Priest. Yeah, and, and that definition of worship is temple sacrifice. There it is. It's not just bowing down in respect to somebody. You see that throughout all cultures, at all levels of status in society. Biblical worship, as ascribed to the, the Heavenly Father and no one else, is through temple sacrifice to His priesthood, which He, he appointed His Son at the resurrection of His Son, become the high priest over his house hebrews chapter uh three verses one through five and his son leads the ceremony of worship to him and this is this is the the process of what's happening in heaven this is why yeshua can refer to his father as the one true god in john 17 Mm 3. so there's the word god can also be used for ruler and rulers of different authority levels that's so true. angels can also be referred to as Elohim or little G gods. 
Mm-hmm. Yeshua himself is called a ruler, a God, by the Father God. But we know, as 1 Corinthians 8, 6, many other passages explain, 1 Corinthians 15, 25 through 28, John 17 through through 5, a whole bunch of other places, John chapter 10, verse 20, that the Father is greater than the Son in authority. Yep. That's why the Son ministers to the Father in Subjugation as the high priest. Yeah. So worship to bow down to somebody like we see people do to Yeshua or to angels is not temple worship that that is ascribed to only the Father. So in ancient cultures that did not worship Yahweh, the creator of heaven and earth, and they worshiped a false pantheon of gods, they would bring temple worship to all of their pantheon of gods. So there's a huge distinction here if you define worship as the bible does which is temple worship with a priest in an ordained temple yeah so like the first time we see it mentioned in genesis when abraham is taking isaac to go what he understands at the time that he was going to go do an offering with a a lamb or a a ram to yahweh he was going to go to an altar and worship by making a meal of fellowship with the father however when you look at idolatry and the idolatrous practices of the nations like with these uh, thousands of gods of these other religions, the worship often involved human sacrifice, child sacrifice, horrific practices like right. uh, adult play, group play setting type of stuff, homosexuality. Yeah. It's all that yeah, was all cannibalism. Like, yeah, cannibalism, yeah. blood drinking, sorcery. I mean, it goes on and on. All the things that God said were sin were involved with the worship of these other gods. Is pretty much how you can tell the difference at first yeah. glance but what else do we got here brother oh so i didn't have many clips tonight had a lot of information i wanted to pour through in scripture to look at but we do have a very short clip here of 117th u.s congress which convened in uh january 3rd of 2021 it's a meeting of the legislative branch of the united states federal government and this guy doing the opening prayer had something interesting to say in his closing remarks can you play this clip please my brother Lord, make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon us and give us peace. Peace in our families, peace across this land. And dare I ask, O Lord, peace even in this chamber, now and evermore. We ask it in the name of the monotheistic God, Brahma. We ask it in the name of the monotheistic God, Brahma. And God known by many names, by many different faiths. A man and a woman. No. (laughs) Yeah, he sure is known by many different names to many different faiths. Brahma is in the name and the authority of Brahma. He said that prayer after quoting a segment from number six, a blessing of Yahweh. They like to do that. That, that's why so many people have asked, you know, on the back of the dollar bill, it says, in God we trust. Well, what God are they talking about? Yeah. Is it the guy mm-hmm. with the, the eagle holding the thunderbolts, maybe? Yeah. Is it the guy yeah, with the just... one eye, the detachable eye floating atop the pyramid? Crazy stuff, that's right? It's wild, man. It's wild. It is, it's in plain sight. You just got to know. You just They don't teach us these things. They don't want us to, to understand the, the, the depth of it so that we can't put the pieces together. But hopefully that's why we're here, to help you guys understand better. What else do we got? I think that was it for Brahma and the Indian Hindu pantheon. And then just so happens that the Hindus, right? You're talking about uh, Vedic India, talking about Tibetan Buddhists. They had the same pantheon of gods of Brahma, as we put forth, was what they called Satan. And uh, their artist depictions also put these guys in the sky, up above the earth. They didn't even believe in a... uh, a heliocentric globe earth cosmology <laughs> the vedic and the hindu cosmology was was very much a stationary plain enclosed world but these modern depictions are just representing yeah. the fact that they understood on the right side you got shiva also up in the clouds in the sky with the birds what is that another swan or a uh, stork i don't know what it was an unclean bird no less yeah could mm-hmm. be and they're riding the bull the sacred cow so that's it's an ele- oh there is a cow there it is yeah, yeah the sacred cow mm-hmm. it's very very interesting it is here is a here's one of those depictions of the the buddhist cosmology or the vedic universe and of course you got uh if you zoom in on this part you got mount maru and they got it acting like it's a a tower connected to the earth but the top of which extends up into the clouds and then of course they put brahma 
who they think is the creator, which we say is Satan, not above the firmament dome, but below it, but at the top of all of it, floating right. on a lotus petal, a lotus flower. The uh, corona from the sun so often will look exactly like a lotus flower. Have you ever noticed that? I don't think I noticed it. There are times when that corona will have these petals. Interesting. It is. Would you read from the Hindu website.com what they said? So Christians believe that the earth was the center of the universe. Hindus believe that Mount Maru, a golden mountain, is the center of the universe. Mount Maru is the most sacred object in the universe because it supports the heavens and the gods. The gods reside in the heaven on the top of the mountain. Okay. So consistently, a lot of times this is represented as this like towering object right. that extends up from the surface of the earth. But if you go to the next slide, they, in their writings, in the, what is right. it, Bhagavata and the different things. Mm -hmm. Well, in here in the Robert Breer, the handbook of Tibetan Buddhist symbols, he says that the sun and the moon revolve around Mount Maru. And as the sun passes behind it, it becomes nighttime. So that's, that's one belief, but it, I think it speaks to the idea that they believed that Mount Maru could <laughs> be in front of the sun. <laughs> right. Which would cause an eclipse. It would, wouldn't it? Right. Yeah. Not necessarily nighttime, but it would appear as such in the middle of the day during an eclipse, doesn't it? That's right. It does. But on the next slide is where they talk about how high they believe this thing to be. The Matsya Purana, the Matsya Purana, and the Bhagavata Purana, along with some other Hindu texts, consistently give the height of 84,000 yojanas to the Mount Maru, which translates into about 672,000 miles. Mount Maru was said to be the residence of King Brahma in antiquity. J.P. Mattel from the history of ancient India. Yeah, 672,000 miles. That's That would be so, so much taller than any structure that could ever possibly be built. I would say it's it's possible that's not even, you know, the firmament might not even be that high. We don't know for sure. No man can know according to scripture. But there's there's one thing about Hindu ancient Hindu writings is that they had huge numbers. They exaggerated stuff like wild. Yes. Like, yes. Our fish was this big, bro. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But so that's what they said. They believed Mount Maru was that high in altitude. <laughs> right. According to that source, 672,000 miles. And they air. said that Brahma who's the the patron god of, of ancient vedic india of the mm -hmm. hinduism that's the equivalent of ra to the egyptians that he lived there mm -hmm. interesting that's what they think here's a sculpture in tibet buddhist monks standing out here hanging out all friendly and saying hi to you but they were in front of a statue that depicts mount maru and of course they got it on the, the upside down cone shaped tower but at the top of that there's clouds and then you see depictions of the sun and the moon on either side of this castle in the sky. Wild. Mount Maru. Yeah. So this is their understanding of the eclipse. In Hindu, the Vedic, Thai, and Tibetan Buddhist astronomy and astrology, Rahu, is one of the nine planets. It is known in the Occident as the dragon's head, as it was thought to be a decapitated serpent who would swallow the sun, causing the eclipse. Yeah, Rahu. A sun eater, right? There's lots of things said about this, so let's check it out. A decapitated serpent. This is kind of a modern rendition of it, but here's some older ones where you got the statues where he's depicted as both on the right a uh, serpent with a very much snake-like body, and then you also have him depicted with angel wings as if he's a rebellious angel, or at least represented by one. Somebody amazing. riding on his back. Who's that, Osiris? <laughs> um. I, I'm not exactly she, sure in this one. Could be Shiva or Vishnu. I'm not sure yeah. either. The power symbol of Rahu adorns every Tibetan stupa. We looked at the stupas on Ancient Worlds episode that we did. In Tantric doctrine, it is this small, unprepossessing flame which has elevated itself above the sun and the moon so as to demonstrate that both shining orbs are under its control, according to the Trimondi.de. And this is a... Uh, a a Merkaba, I think they called it, this symbol mm -hmm. here. And uh, at the very top, of course, you have a an eclipse, sun. basically. Yeah. yeah. You have the, the sun crescent is the word I was looking for. And then there's some sort of object in front of that. But then you got a smaller black dot with a flame coming off of it. It's pretty amazing. It reminds me, the description reminds me of the Masonic tracing board where yeah. the sun and the moon are below in height to the, the light source uh, of the 
of the LCNI in the center. That's so exactly it's, right. They thought of Rahu the same way. Yeah. Among the various texts, Rahu is also called a dragon, a snake, a demon, minister of the demons, lord of the darkness, lord of illusions, a shadow planet, king of planets, the eclipser, a sun eater, one who is near the sun, and one who has death inflicting sight, like the eye of Ra was described in ancient Egypt. In Sanskrit, Ra means to hide or that which is hidden, mysterious or secretive like secrets that's wild all these names attributed to rahu to the indians and hindu hinduism it it, it seems pretty on the nose like he's literally a decapitated dragon the head of a serpent floating in the air was formerly the top of a great mountain also a palace where brahma lived i mean it's pretty amazing it really is yeah and the things it just seems consistent across the cultures yeah what does this one say Ancient Tamil astrological scripts, Rahu is considered an incarnation of Shakti, a female goddess, and dietized as Kali. Also worshipped in the forms of goddesses Durga and Parvati, the consort of Shiva. So when we had a slide showing all the different goddesses that derived from Isis, aka Astarte, Ashtaroth, this is one of them, right? That's right. The one that I had in the middle, and right there it says an incarnation uh, Rahu was considered an incarnation of this goddess, and she was called by different names. Kali being one of the most famous. Isn't that uh, outside of CERN? There's a statue. Sorry. Was that Shiva or Kali? It's, it's uh, Shiva. But, it's Shiva. Um, but the Indian government's version of CERN, they have their own hydrogen collider, and that is called the, the acronym is K A L I. The there acronym is. is for Kali. It's a popular name, popular goddess. It's literally got a necklace made of heads. Sometimes it's yeah. it is. His skulls. Yeah, because she would glow in a bloodlust and start eating people. Right. Just like the Eye of Ra was described to do.